There's all these people walking around with like crazy dense looking muscles and they don't even eat anything. They just fast all the time. What the heck's going on? Is it because they're so lean they just look like they have dense muscle or does fasting actually contribute to higher quality dense muscle? Personally, I've always wondered it myself. I've noticed that most of the people that preach fasting or intermittent fasting as a general lifestyle tend to have a certain look to their muscles. I can't put my finger on it. It's more dense, it seems higher quality, and generally speaking, pound for pound, they're very, very strong for how much they weigh. Okay, I'm a little bit of an anomaly with the amount of size that I hold in the world of like intermittent fasting. Usually people are a little bit smaller, very lean, and very strong. Okay, what is going on with this high quality muscle? Well, there's a perfectly good explanation and the journal cell makes some solid sense of it. Before we break this down, before you get an understanding of it, I wanna give you a quick word from one of my sponsors. Hey, I want you guys to check out Tau Clean. I normally don't talk about these kinds of products on my channel because I'm usually keeping it to nutrition and, and food products, but this is a really cool product and something I've been using for about nine months, since about March or so. It's called Tau Clean, and yes, it's literally a toothbrush, but this toothbrush is something different. I want you to check it out. It utilizes a very unique UV light. Okay, the owner, the creator of this product is someone that I would consider a genius. This guy is amazing. And what this base station does is it has a UV light in it so that when you put your toothbrush in it, after you're done using it, it kills over 99% of bacteria and viruses. So if you are brushing your teeth, you don't have to worry about like scrubbing or putting your toothbrush in the dishwasher or things like that to get it to sterilize. You plug it right back into the base station and the UV light kills a lot of the pathogens. They also have this with face brushes and everything like that, which my wife loves, but personally I'm a big fan of the toothbrush. Not to mention the toothbrush still works at 40,000 strokes per minute, which is just super epic and awesome to begin with. And I don't need to go down the oral hygiene rabbit hole. I've done it before. It's typically not the kind of thing I talk about on my channel, but it's very, very important. And it plays a big role in overall health. So anyway, there's a special discount. I want you to check them out down below. And thank you for sticking through the sponsor message. Now let's rock and roll. So muscle quality, muscle density. One could argue it doesn't really matter as far as the look is concerned, but internally we got something going on. So this journal cell study found that when autophagy was inhibited, when autophagy did not occur, muscle recovery was much worse. So what we're finding out is that autophagy plays a big role in muscle recovery. Well, recovery is one thing, but what about muscle density? Well, let's talk recovery for just a second though. Okay, when you work out, you break down muscle fibers and those muscle fibers are going to leave what is called sarcoplasmic debris. Okay, your muscle cells are your muscle fibers, it's sarcoplasm, right? So you got the sarcoplasmic reticulum, all that gobbledygook. When you break down a muscle fiber from working out, you have this debris. Well, this debris has to get cleaned up somehow, right? Well, it turns out that autophagy plays a role, a big role in cleaning up that debris, allowing for proper muscle recovery. Hence why this journal cell study showed when autophagy was shut off, muscle recovery slowed way, 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 way down. Okay, well, that talks about recovery. Let's take it one step further. You see, what's happening is you have an increased internal energy demand. Okay, so what that looks like is when you don't eat, you activate a very specific pathway called AMPK. This AMPK pathway is something I talk about all the time, I'll make it brief. It's the energy sensor in your body. So it senses you don't have food coming in, but you're still expending energy, so we need to activate something to allow us to use your internal fuel sources, your fat stores, etc. Well, what ends up happening is when you work out, you create more of an energy demand. So you activate that AMPK even more. So you activate even more autophagy. So people that work out in a fasted state end up having more autophagy during or after their workout, which is a huge piece when we look at the recovery. But now let's look at what makes a higher quality muscle to some degree. We have these things called satellite cells. And if you look at how a muscle grows or how we wonder if it grows, because there's a lot of theories, these satellite cells play a big role. We have the muscle tissue, the fiber itself, and hovering outside of that tissue is we have these little satellite cells, just like the name implies, they're little cells that are kind of floating around, okay, ready to act. Well, when we break down a muscle fiber, we take these satellite cells and they fuse to the broken fiber. So envision this. Okay, fiber breaks, 
but there's satellite cells hovering right outside, and they come in and they fill the gap and make the muscle grow. Okay, so these satellite cells play a huge role. The problem is these satellite cells need fuel and they need energy too. Well, where they're generally getting energy in this case is through autophagy. We've seen in other studies that autophagy gives energy to these satellite cells. The more satellite cells that we have and the more ability to fuse and create a bigger muscle, we have what is called more muscle nuclei. That means the muscle is, in lack of a better term, more alive, it has more ability, has more nuclei, more epicenters. Well, that nuclei is what allows us to utilize the protein and allows the muscle to grow. More nuclei equals more protein equals more muscle growth. Okay, but it doesn't always equate to growth. It can just equate to a better quality muscle as some of these studies have actually referenced it. So when you look at what is called muscle cell proliferation, which is where you're creating muscle because of a workout, autophagy provides these satellite cells with a fuel so that the muscle can do its job without having to have its energy drawn to something else. Now there's another piece that we have to look at and that is the piece of muscle protein breakdown during a fast. So during our fast, whether we're working out or not, our muscle and our protein within our muscle can break down a little bit. But it's not just like you think. Our muscles don't just break down. Usually weaker components of the muscle will break down. Okay, and they will get liberated into the bloodstream and used uh, as a fuel source for gluconeogenesis. So then what ends up happening is after that, we have our break fast meal, okay, we consume a meal with protein, and that new fresh protein, those new amino acids come in and they replace what was broken down. If we had never fasted in the first place, we would still be sitting there with the low quality muscle protein that never got broken down. The fast gave us a catalyst for that muscle protein to break down and then for a new protein to come in. It was a call to action that we otherwise would not have had, leading potentially to a higher quality, more dense muscle. A lot of this is speculation based on plugging research together, but much of it is just what I see in the fasting and that kind of community. Generally, there is a better look to the muscle, and generally, pound for pound, I see them being stronger, whether they are working out in a fed or fasted state at that time or not. Anyhow, as always, keep it locked in here on my channel. See you tomorrow.